Welcome to Desmond's Thunders, a photo diary from Fendlaster Castle. Welcome to this week's Desmond's Thunders photo diary. Why not join us on our Donders? Welcome to this week's Desmond's Donders Photo Diary from Finlatter Castle. The ruins of Finlatter Castle stand on a rocky promontory projecting out into the sea some two miles east of Colin and a mile west of Sandbend. You're directed from the A98 to a parking area near a farm. And from here it's a walk along a grassy path to the board on the cliffs and behind it the castle. Finlatter Castle is the old seat of the Earls of Finlatter and Seafield, sitting on the high cliff overlooking the Firth. It lies west of Banff near the village of Sandend and the cliffs here contain quartz and the name Finlatter is derived from the Scots Gaelic words Fion and Litia meaning white and cliff or slope. The first historical reference to the castle is around 1246. King Alexander III of Scotland then repaired the castle in the 1260s in preparation for an invasion by King Haakon IV of Norway. The Vikings took and held the castle for some time and the castle remains that are still there from the 14th century rebuilding when the castle was redesigned based on the Roslyn Castle model. James V of Scotland visited Finlata in November 1535 after a pilgrimage to Tain. In September 1562, Mary Queen of Scots sent an army equipped with artillery from Dunbar Castle to besiege Finlatter, which was held against her by John Gordon of Finlatter, a son of the Earl of Huntley. When Mary was nearby on 20th September, she had sent her trumpeter messenger to deliver the castle to the captain of her guard, but he was refused. The previous laird of Finlatter and Ogilby had been master of household to Mary of Guise. He lost his inheritance following sexual misconduct with his mother-in-law and making a plan to imprison his father in a cellar to deprive him of sleep and so drive him insane to obtain his lands. After his father's death his mother married John Gordon who then took possession of the castle and lands and promptly imprisoned her. In October, the Earl of Huntley sent Mary the keys of Finlatter and Ochindun, but she was suspicious of the low status of the messenger. The remains you see today appear to date back to the castle built here, presumably incorporating early work in the 1450s by Sir Walter Ogilvy. This is sometimes said to have been based on the design for Roslyn. Though whether this is really the case or is simply that both were constrained by similar sites on spurs of rock surrounded by precipitous drops is unclear. The board on the cliffs above shows a building that actually looks oddly reminiscent of Eileen Doden Castle, though on a much smaller site. This was built up to a considerable height from the rock on which it stood and has a footprint which seems to wholly cover the end of the promontory. At the landward end access was where a walkway raised on stone causeway considerably above the surrounding rocks, which had two gaps crossed by drawbridges. 
residents would have felt completely safe from unfriendly visitors, but perhaps less so from coastal erosion. Diary, 14th of August 2020. I set out alone and headed for Finlatter Castle. Lindsay will join me later. The car park is busy, but it's a nice day and getting better. I parked up and settled in, waiting for Lindsay to arrive. Colin is coming this weekend, so he will be here this afternoon as well. He arrived mid-afternoon and we chatted the time away. Later, Lindsay arrived with supper fish and chips from Colin. As usual, they didn't disappoint. There was a lovely sunset which Lindsay took pictures of, but I declined. Soon it was dark and time for bed. of August. Today is our 40th wedding anniversary. What will the day bring? Well, breakfast first. Then we spent much of the day outside in the sun. We walked down to the castle and then were entertained by an old biplane flying around. And we watched the gulls and former flying. Lindsay went mountaineering. We returned up the path and Colin and Lindsay visited the Ducat. I guarded the path. We returned to sit in the sun and had a light lunch. Then I decided, as there was a lull in the people, I would fly the drone. That was a joke, as a horde of people suddenly appeared, and the footage will tell the story on Friday. Craig and Laura paid us a visit during the afternoon bearing chocolates and a card. Lindsay made a salad and we had it with roast ham and tatties for tea. We had a great relaxed day and Colin and I capped it off with a dram. Sixteenth of August 2020. We were up and just finishing breakfast in time for the RSGB news. We then had another copper and Lindsay decided it was time for her to head for home. I did not as she has the car here. So after an afternoon of sorting out the world, drinking tea and directing traffic to the castle with Colin, I said goodbye and then headed home myself. We had a great weekend and pleasant company with Colin and the weather certainly helped. 15th. Wildlife, orange tip, large white, white-tailed bumblebee, scotch argus, painted lady and red admiral. Birds, Rook, Wood Pigeon, Herring Gull, Magpie, Carrion Crow, Swallow, Jackdaw, House Martin, Linnet, Goldfinch, House Sparrow, Fulmer, Puffin, Oyster Catcher, Pied Wagtail, Sparrowhawk, Buzzard, Black Headed Gull, Common Gull. Thank you.
thank you for watching Desmond Stompers. We'll hope you'll join us again for more photos, waffle and video as we travel around Scotland. Bye for now.